Hello everyone. Uh, today's on the bench Yozu FR-101. Now this is a HF receiver and it's also capable of 2 meter and 6 meter FM receive. Now this was sent in by a local to have looked at. Um, he wanted to try to use it for AM to go along with his Johnson Valiant. So he asked me if I would take a look at it, see if I can get it up and going. So we're going to go ahead and open up the top of it and take a look inside and see what we see. You know, just having a quick peek inside, um, you know, everything looks to be in place. However, the uh, 2 meter and 6 meter boards are missing. But at one time, I can tell they were installed. As you can see by the uh, chassis, you can tell where the metal has set and where the metal won't set in. You can see the, uh, how dirty the chassis is. So uh, they have been removed. Another thing I'm seeing is this little board here on the back with a potentiometer. And it says active antenna. So someone's installed an active antenna board. And up here at the front, there's some kind of little modified board that's been added. No idea what this is, it's just kind of flapping around inside. I don't like seeing, you know, stuff like that. I do see all the crystals down in there, so Look like there's no crystal is missing. So we just want to turn this thing on and, and see if it does anything whatsoever. Now since there's no tubes and high voltage involved in this radio, I'm not too uh, worried about firing it up. I know the owner has already had it plugged in and was testing it so he was not able to receive anything. We'll go ahead and turn the power on and I do hear some static in the speaker we're on 7.200 some band switch is set there let's see everything else let's see what it's setting at attenuators down VHF is off we're on fast internal all the buttons are out we'll be on FM wide this is the uh, RF gain and the AF gain. I'm going to pop the uh, signal generator on. And we'll feed a signal right into the uh, back of the radio. Need to make sure our muting plug was in place. putting a, a 20k signal into the uh, receiver and it's not receiving nothing at all. Like I said it is static so we know that the audio section is working but there is no detection of uh, receiving any RF at all. So inside our radio you'll note the uh, transformer here and here you'll see another board this is our regulator board and our beat frequency oscillator board all on the same board and yeah kind of strange ain't it you wouldn't think that they would have the uh, beat frequency oscillator located on the same uh, board as any power supply circuitry but they do and when we simply pull this board out You can see this half of it is our BFO and this half of it is our regulator and our um, bridge rectifier and filtering for the two power supply rails. 
you turn it over you can see it's separated right down the middle by these two uh, ground plane traces so again you know simple but effective so as far as checking out the power supply rails we'll look right down here on this connector here and we'll be looking for pin 17 and pin 14 pin 14 is our 6 volt rail pin 17 is our 13.8 volt rail and we'll power the unit up And that's 13.75 volts. I think y'all can see that in the meter. And our 14, it's running about 5.68. A little low. Again, you know, probably need to change out some capacitors. But uh, it's well within working tolerance of this radio. So I think at this point, the best thing to do which it needs to be done anyway is let's start removing some boards and cleaning those sockets all these modules are plugged in and we have one two three four five boards that needs to be pulled out and clean and deox those connections you'd be surprised sometimes at how much difference that'll make just by cleaning those I've seen it bring dead radios right back to life without having to do hardly anything else to it. I have the AEF calibration board removed and the first thing you can see if you remember my uh, $10 FT101 videos um, we're talking about these old Mylar or dip capacitor splitting you can see these are doing the exact same. But if we look here at the, uh, you can see what's plugged in is like a, a wet substance on the board. And looking at the back of it, we can see this green corrosion has started building up. So I'm going to go ahead and clean these pins and we'll see how it looks from there. Well, no surprises in cleaning all the uh, boards that I could uh, get to without taking the outer case off. The only one that hasn't been cleaned is this bottom board here. But uh, I went ahead and cleaned the uh, band switch and the mode switch and a few other things that could be causing some problems. But I don't really think that is the, the issue to start with. Uh, so one thing we need to do is check and uh, you know I've said many times before always check to see what does work and the good way of doing that is looking at this VFO so what we want to do is uh, you see three pins here on the uh, VFO and what we want to do is go where this red wire is this is our signal out and we're just going to uh, the volume down we'll go up to the high end of the band we're on 40 meters doesn't matter which band you're on I wish I can't we get this uh, clip on here okay I got our frequency counter lead clipped on and got the ground clip on and we'll go up here to the uh, frequency counter and you can see we're reading about 8.6 megahertz. So 8.7. Should go up to about, I think, 9.5. I'll have to check the manual and see. But we can see our VFO is running. And it's a strong enough signal. It's 9.29. 
so uh, no problems with the VFO at all that seems to be uh, working just fine so we know that our VFO is putting a signal out but how about our mixing crystals now we need to check to see if our mixing crystals are uh, you know putting the signal out for each band because uh, you take the VFO and the mixing crystals now mix together to produce the IF frequency that's needed to uh, for the radio to receive so I guess the next check would be to get up here and see if we can see if we got any output on the uh, oscillator board for the mixing crystals that's just up here okay so we could try to you know run this a little bit backwards here this is our pre-select with our oscillators and all our crystals in here and this signal comes up and it goes down here through the uh, RF board but where it ends up at is all the way over to the mixer board So we can follow that signal all the way over here to pin one on the mixer board and we can check and we you know it's the easiest point to get to to see if we got any signal getting into our mixer board if we don't have signal getting to our mixer board then nothing's going to happen so like I say you know it comes all the way over here from the uh, the crystal oscillator board through the RF amp again up to the mixer board so right down in here is our mixer board pins and right here is pin 1 you can see that white piece of coax there so what I'm going to do is just clip our frequency counter probe on turn the radio on and we'll come up here and have a look at the uh, frequency counter again and you can see it just pretty much random changing uh, run through some bands and you see nothing's happening so there's no signal getting to that mixer board so if we was to follow this signal here it comes all the way over here to our RF amplifier board so we'll move from there to this end of the coax and we'll connect here on our RF amplifier board and again still nothing on the frequency counter so uh, what we want to do now we're going to look at the input of our RF board so we'll come right over here to this side and we'll clip on this little uh huh did you see that this is the input going to the RF board and this little capacitor is broken completely loose from the RF board and you can see right here it says out this is on the oscillator board and that capacitor should be hooked there so I'm going to just take the frequency counter and pop it up here to where it says out and see if I got anything so I got our frequency counter connected to the little broken off piece on the out pin and look over here at the frequency counter and we're seeing 15.5335 megahertz so let's go over to the uh, next amateur band and that's 13.0184 megahertz so this may be the main problem so I'm going to go ahead and get this soldered back in place and see what happens well, I went to attach the capacitor and you can see the leg broke off so uh, what I did was just went up here 
then take soldered another capacitor in its place just to go ahead and check and see if anything is uh, working right. I got the radio tuned to 7.2 megahertz and turn the signal generator on. Turn the AF gain up. And I'm hearing a little something this time. Ah. We cut that down so it ain't so loud in the camera. This camera picks up this tone so easily. Cut this on slow. And then turn the uh, generator down. still receiving a signal that's about 0.5 microvolts and about 0.2 I'm still hearing it that's at minus 73 dBm and we're about a S8 down here on the meter So our rig is coming back to life. Alright, I went ahead and ran through all the hand bands to check them to make sure they were receiving and everything is pretty much spot on with uh, the exception of 20 meters and 10 meters. Uh, 10 meters is receiving but it's very low. It's probably some uh, you know need the lining and 20 meters I'm on 14.100 now I'm putting a 20k signal into the uh, radio and absolutely nothing so I don't know if it's a filter it's bad or if uh, the crystal oscillator is uh, non-functioning on this band. I might go in and clean the uh, band switch a little more and uh, test it out and see if there's any uh, problems there. We're looking down here at the crystal board and I went ahead and pulled the 20 meter crystal out as you can see and for some reason if you look around the holes it's very wet I don't know if somebody sprayed some type of cleaner down there but I got a feeling that those uh, crystal uh, pins may be uh, corroded or something so we'll probably going to have to end up getting down there and taking that board out and cleaning everything up but this may be why the uh, 20 meter band is not working. I got a uh, crystal plugged into my crystal oscillator board and plugged directly into the frequency counter. And you see it's reading 20.015 megahertz. I think it should be 20.02 according to the manual. So it's not far off be causing any kind of issues nothing that can't be trimmed up with the trimmer but you know, we're going to have to get in there and see if we can find out why this 20 meter band is not working it could be be a tap on the uh, band selector so we'll have to look at that and see and you know that's just a, uh, a basic little crystal board with a uh, emitter follower transistor if you've never seen one these uh Alan W2AEW had put this on one of his YouTube videos and right after watching that I built this just a little over a year maybe two years ago and it works great for just testing questions okay I got the uh 
radio set on 14.100 and I went ahead and cleaned the uh, crystal socket but still did not make no difference so the manual says TC um, TC19 is the trimmer for the 20 meter crystal now I'm going to turn the volume up I got the generator on and we're going to just tune that trimmer and see if anything comes up now the rotor on these trimmers are grounded so using a uh, metal screwdriver is not going to hurt anything let me turn the volume up. And we have a signal. Now the first way I turn it you probably can hear the single and that's on the uh, back side of the trimmer. So we'll turn it all the way around. And I'll watch the S meter. Kind of peek it out. Now the 20 meter band is now receiving all the way down to about 0.5 microvolts. Alright, that's making more progress. We were all hearing a little code down on the low end of 20 as you can see by this uh, meter looks like about an S7 noise floor today in here it is terrible the bands seem to be in real bad shape but I was tuning through was hoping to hear some um, voice activity on 20 but did not I was hearing a little bit on 40 not a whole lot I have some locals off in the distance but 20 is uh, plumb near dead. Well, it seems to be the only voice that I'm picking up today on 20 is uh, foreign. <laughs> so, uh, you know, if it's picking up foreign people, uh, God knows where they at. Um, it should be receiving uh, more than what we're seeing, but um, apparently nobody wants to talk on the band today. But uh, yeah, uh, 20 now seems to be working just fine. Well, you know, it's still going to be a, a lot of work to do to this thing. Uh, we got to get go ahead and get the faceplate pulled off get it cleaned up get all the, you know, the knobs good and clean clean out all the potentiometers and the uh, switches all the controls get all them back to where they need to be and um, another problem I don't know how good y'all will see this in the camera let me re remove the camera and uh, so you can get a better view of it you can see the display is not that great you can see the four this four and the two sevens are pretty much about the same brightness you can see the two is a little weak and the one is very weak these are vacuum um, fluorescent displays 
so I don't know what we can do I don't know if we can go in there and uh, run some voltage through it and try to uh, clean some of the crud off the electrodes or what we have done stuff like that in the past but we'll just have to give that a shot and see um, I just don't know if, uh, if we can do anything with it or not but we'll try you know right now it's still readable um, if we go to uh, 15 meters you can see the two is is fairly visible same thing with uh, 10 meters you know that two is almost gone and we'll need to probably look at the uh, the voltage going to each segment just to make sure there's not a problem with a resistor or something in line we might can even change it you know try to up the voltage just a little bit just to brighten that display up but it looks like it's already in a failing mode and I don't know how uh, uh, available these displays are going to be so these vacuum fluorescent displays are just basically tubes there's six tubes across here and uh, they are the uh, NEC LD8062 um, VFD tubes these are also the same tubes that are used in the YC601 digital display but a lot of people don't know if you're looking for these if you run across the old uh, Toshiba BC1217 calculators same tube that was used in the calculators um, so that's kind of interesting to know but we'll have to get this all poured out and take a look at it and see what we can uh, do about getting this display back to where it should be at least this first digit and we need to look at the second digit but you know it's working but it just ain't not the second but the third it just isn't as bright as it should be I want to hear right quick let me move the uh, digital display unit and remove it there are four screws on each side that you can see you have to remove this RCA jack this feeds the it takes the uh, signal from the VFO and it converts it to 13 to 13.5 megahertz and that's what drives this counter unit it's actually a frequency counter and like I say remove it you remove these four screws there's two on each side when you're removing these um, you know turn it three or four times go to the next one and keep going around till you get them all out don't try to uh, screw one completely out you can see it's uh, got little snap rings on the top and the bottom and if you keep pushing it out you're actually trying to warp the case and it'll knock these spot welds off so you don't want to uh, do that you know kind of go around turning each one a couple of times and here on the front is the uh, little vacuum fluorescent displays and you see they're just uh, wired right down to the board and uh, they're stuck in this little cardboard and got a little bit of uh, glue on the top to keep them standing vertical so they don't lean over so again you know there's a good chance these are bad looking at them you can't tell if there's anything wrong um, you know because they all look the same and we know this digit this digit has a little issue going on this one's light and this one just about out again there could be some uh, dropping resistors we have to take a look at the schematic but we'll do that in the next video and uh, check that out I just want to go ahead and open this up so you could have a peep inside if you've never seen one of these now again uh, as far as the uh, schematic for this display unit you will not find this in the FR101 service manual or schematic this is not in there you actually have to go and 
download the instruction manual digital receiver FR101 digital counter unit you'll have to download that so you'll have the uh, schematic for the uh, display unit you can sort of see our tube connection there but in the next video we'll get more into uh, going in and troubleshooting this thing make sure all the voltages are right and everything is working correctly um, there's not but I think two electrolytic capacitors inside this display unit there should be one right on the other side of this board yeah I can see one peeking back there and then you'll have one sitting over here these need to be replaced even if you don't replace the uh, electrolytics in the receiver they are good quality but these in the counter unit really need to be replaced so we'll go ahead and get all this checked out in the uh, next video on this and see if we can figure it out now this is uh, got two cables that go down here to the main board you can unplug those and pull this unit completely out I just want to go ahead and give you a quick look at this so you can see uh, just what's going on here one last quick thing remember the transalizer that we had on the uh, bench here a few weeks ago well one of our viewers happened to send in this that he had scanned and you know we already had the manual but the good thing is we now have some schematics and this is the uh, schematic is all cut down now I also have this in file format also that he sent me so what I plan on doing is taking this and running it through a program and see can't we uh, clean it up and get all this discoloration out and uh, touch up some of the lines and stuff and hopefully uh, we can get it better looking but I really appreciate this being sent in because uh, this is nowhere on the internet to be found uh, like I say the uh, manual for the Mark 3A is on there but the schematic is nowhere on the internet but now we have a copy and we also have PDF files. So as far as our power supply goes in this unit, the uh, FR101 is a very basic, simple power supply. You see this is our AC mains comes in. It also has jacks for DC. Now there's only three power rails in this radio. You got a 15 volt, a 14 volt, and your AC and the AC runs the uh, pilot lamps and the digital display you know um, the AC goes through a 2.2 meg resistor and that powers the display so the display in this uh, radio is uh, AC powered but you see there's two taps here and we grounded on one side of the the uh, secondary and the other side both sides run over and the center tap is left open and it travels right on up here to the regulator board we see our, our 15 volts comes in and goes right through this uh, regulator IC and it comes back out at 6 volts at 14 volts it comes up and it's rectified and filtered and then it comes out as our 13.8 volts DC so it's about as simple as you can get in a power supply design so just to recap we took this Yaesu FR-101 and took it from a dead state to a working state in just a matter of moments and all we done was just some basic common sense troubleshooting 
and you know that involved pulling out some boards and cleaning them then checking to see what was working we found out that the VFO was working and then we moved right on to the uh, heterodyne oscillator and found out that there was no signal there and that was due to a bad capacitor that was broken away from the circuit board and then we found that 20 meters weren't working and a simple uh, tweak on the trimmer brought that back to life so as you can see just you know 30 minutes and this radio is now back working and it's at the state where we can go in and we can work on it now and start cleaning um, checking over bad parts replacing those split capacitors that you saw in the video earlier and then we can start you know doing some cosmetic cleaning and you know make another look over and then figure out what we're going to do about this uh, abomination <laughs> I think it's a good idea what they were trying to do but uh, these transistors are war 2 in 30 let me get a light on here so I can see it They are 2 in 3053s as a pair of them. And you see we got a, about three inductors, a few caps, and some passive resistors, and uh, one electrolytic. And looking at this is where this is tied into and where it's coming from. It seems to be a receiver preamp that someone has added in. Well, you know, you already added in this uh, active antenna back here in the back and then they've added this receiver preamp so uh, you know with all this right here probably going to be close to overdriving the front end of this receiver and I don't think it really needs all that so we might just do away with uh, one of the two or if we decided, you know, I'll talk with the owner. If he wants to keep this, we can uh, probably put it in a relay to switch it completely out or, or back in. Um, my thoughts is to take it completely out. These radios were not too bad of a receiver to start with. So, uh, I don't really think we need it. Especially with this active antenna that they've got uh, installed in it back here. So, you can see we made some pretty good progress on this thing. Now, it's, it's filthy all over. I haven't cleaned that much um, over here on the side. You can see the uh, cobwebs that's built up on, on it. I mean, it's just completely filthy. So, uh, in the meantime, I'm going to start doing some cleaning of this thing and get it nice, pretty, and shiny. And we're going to end this video and call it Part 1, Overview Inspection. And then in the next video, we'll get down to some nitty-gritty and uh, looking at what needs to be replaced. We already know that the old brown dip capacitors has got to go because uh, they look like split peas. So, uh... Yeah, I think we're off to a good start on this one. And uh, you can see she's packed full of filters over here. We've got a CW filter, AM filter, and a single sideband filter. So it ought to be pretty good. We'd love to find the uh, 2 meter and 6 meter boards and put in here for them. But that's going to be like looking for hen's teeth. <laughs> that would make this radio pretty complete. It does have the FM board setting over here. So that's been installed. So that's a good thing. We do have that. But uh, yeah, it would be nice to uh, find those uh, other two boards and put in here. You know, just to make the radio complete. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoy part one of this. It was kind of fun to go through this thing and bring it from a dead state to a 
working state without doing just a whole lot and just you know basic common sense troubleshooting so anyway plenty to do here in the shop we'll get to some more videos and uh, I'll probably gather up some parts and get some stuff ordered for this and uh, we'll catch this video up here not too long for now on part two of this anyway hear your comments down below and we'll see you in the next video bye now